Hello and welcome once again to Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in Brevard, North Carolina. It's Monday, so I'm at my house. And I thought I'd do a video for y'all on my favorite short row heel, which is a little different than the short row heel in Nina's vanilla sock recipe. She has a great video for her short row heel. I want to show you one that does German short rows on the way in, and then it does some slip stitching on the way out. So I've already done one of my heels. I'm, I'm alternating colors with toes and heels and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm also doing two at a time on a magic loop. And as you can see, I've done one whole heel before going on to the other. A short row heel means you're stuck in the middle of that, of that sock until you're done with the heel. You can't do them two at a time, technically. These are still hanging out on my needles, but I've only done one heel. So I'm gonna show you how I transition from one to another. What you'll do, if you're doing two at a time, you'll do the heels one at a time. I'm gonna show you the second one, but essentially, you'll take what, I'll sh what I show you and do it to the first one and then to the second one. <laughs> so I'll be as clear as I can. Let's get to it. So doing two at a time on one needle magic loop, there's a lot going on here. But before we start, I just wanna show y'all the difference between these two heels. So this is the heel that uses short rows going in and out. This is Mina's vanilla sock recipe. And it is a great one. I'll see if I can get my hand in here to show you. It's a good one. Any short row heel is probably gonna have a little bit of gappiness depending on how tight you pull your short rows. And maybe I could have pulled these tighter. This is my first time trying Mina's. She's got a great video she already has done for that. And then I will say also this one that I'm doing, there's a different needle size between these two. So you may not want to fully compare them one to one because I'm using a smaller needle for the thing I'm about to show you as well. This is an excellent way to do a short row. She already has a video, so I'm doing a video on a different short row. This has short rows going in and slip stitches going out. Now, either way, you're gonna see some of this and you're gonna feel a little bit of this when you wear them. It's just a different type of heel than the classic flap, turn, and gusset. I have videos on those. So, Let's dive into what I'm doing right now. First, I'm gonna get these straightened out. I've done one short row, and I need to get over here. I'm changing colors as I go. So I'm going to, I just finished my last pearl row of what I'm about to show y'all moving forward. And my yarn is over here on the edge, but I need to get over to this sock. So very simply, I'm gonna knit across this heel. If you ever find that you're over here, but we haven't done this heel yet, we don't want to turn around. We're going to turn around in the middle of this, this heel. But when we're done with things, we always want to be going in a circle. So I'm pushing my needle in so I can knit across and I'm pulling out the back end so I can go around. I already have videos. If it's your first time knitting magic loop, this isn't a starter magic loop video. When I come back over here, I may pick up stitches to try to close the gap if I feel like there's gonna be a gap. And actually, just so there's less of an edge here, I am gonna slip this first stitch and knit across the heel that I've already completed to get to the other side. The other thing as I approach the end here, that knitting across, knit that last one, the other thing, knitting across with my second color, it puts my heel color and the color I'm gonna continue with over on the same side. Now to do that over here, so I can't keep going around in a circle because this side, I still have this other heel to do. And what I'm going to do before I start doing my heel, I'm going to knit across and pick and start with my other color. 
Now I have two options here if my heels are different colors. If I start with my white here, it means I'm, I'm going to have to pick up to knit across when I finish my heel with this color. But to simplify things in a way, I am going to knit across with my multicolor and start the heel on the purl side. Okay, I'm at the end now. If I was gonna be moving on with my whole sock, I would turn and pull the needle in and start knitting on the other side. But this is the non-heel side. I'm, I'm gonna ignore that. I'm gonna turn this and keep the needle exactly where it is. Might move the yarn out of the way so that I actually am gonna purl back across this to start making my heel. I'm gonna find the other end of my yarn because I'm doing all of this with one skein of yarn of each color. So I'm gonna grab this yarn if I wanted to, I could do a short row heel here. It's a little tricky because I'm changing colors, but to start my short row heel, I would want to slip this last stitch over to my other needle. Let's move this guy out of the way and yank it up and over to do my German short row. I have a whole video on German short rows and how they function. Let's pull that first guy over because especially if you were doing this with one color, we'd want to do that. We slip the last stitch worked over to our right needle, yank it up and over the needle and back to the front so we can then purl across. So I'm going to start purling across with my white and I'm going to tuck the tail in the middle. Now I'm only going across one sock. This one, the, the heel's done. So he's just going to hang there. It's going to make the weight of this a little funky, but we're just going to keep going back and forth on only one heel now. So I am purling all the way across and I will meet you on the other side. All right, I am at the other end. Here's my last stitch of this side that I just purled across. Again, my other sock is over here and I'm just leaving him hanging. I'm gonna turn the entire work around. Again, I'm ignoring this sock. And the thing with, with German short rows and slipping is you wanna make sure your yarn's in front before you slip a stitch. On the purl side, it's not a problem, but I moved my yarn to the front here, even though it's between needles, I'm still moving it to the, between socks, I should say, I'm still moving it to the front so I can slip the last stitch worked purl-wise, which means putting my needle in, without twisting the stitch, moving it over. I know it's super loose, but I'm gonna just yank the yarn up and over the needle. On this, it actually brings the multicolor up over my stitch. And then I'm knitting, so I don't have to bring it all the way back to the front. I'm just bringing it up and over. What I like to say about German short rows is pull it up and over the needle and position yourself to continue. On this row, it just means I wanna hang on to it up and over the needle nice and tight and keep knitting. I'm gonna knit all the way back across until I come up to the last short row that I did. So I'm gonna be going, call it a, a short row or a double stitch or that, that lifting of the stitch over the needle. That means I'm gonna be knitting across until there's one stitch left. And because we change colors, it might look a little funky, but we'll see as we keep going if we can identify stuff. Now that's my cat coming to visit. All right, nope, you gotta keep moving. Yeah, hi, I'm doing a video. He got bored. All right, I can tell where the last stitch is. It might look like two stitches, but this is the thing I pulled up and over, this multicolor here. So I'm gonna knit right up to it. This is my last single stitch, not what looks like a double stitch. Stopping one before the end. And it looks a little loose here because I have a tail there. I'm gonna stop there. 
I'm going to turn the work around. My yarn's already in front because I have purl stitches facing me. So I'm going to slide the last stitch worked over to my right needle. I'm going to lift. I'm pulling the yarn up and over the needle. It creates what looks like a double stitch. It's got two stitches. It's actually a little X there. I'm going to wrap around to the front to keep that double stitch right there. And I'm wrapping to the front. I mean, I could wrap it over the stitch. Then I have to set up to do my next stitch, which is a purl. So I'm going to keep that tension and pull up to the front so I can purl across. And this purling, I'm going to do right up to the last German short row or double stitch that I did. And again, my other, my other sock is hanging here and pulling. So if I need to slide it up closer, I can, but I'm not going to be touching it for a little while here. I'm going to purl up to the last double stitch worked or created. <laughs> my cat is head butting against my elbow and he is distracting me and throwing off my vocabulary. At this point, from here on in for quite some time, we are not going to reach the edge of the sock anytime soon. We're doing short rows going into the center. So the rows will take a little while, but they'll get shorter as I go. Get some more slack off of there. Here, only with these very first and last stitches will it be a different color, but this is my double stitch. I have three more to go. I'm gonna go right up to it. I'm gonna go right up to it and then I'm going to turn the work. Get my tension set up because I want to slip this last stitch worked, but I need my yarn in front to do so. Slip the last stitch over to the right needle, yank up and over the needle. It pulls the stitch underneath up, get set to do my next row, which is a knit row. So I just want to hold that tension to knit my next stitch, which will keep a double stitch right there. And I'm going to knit across to the last double stitch that I created, which will be fewer stitches than last time because we're getting closer to the center. Again, if you switch colors like I did, that means that there's a little bit of craziness over here where I have to pull it tighter. But I have a double stitch, it looks like two stitches, and I have another double stitch Here's the last one. Sometimes it can feel like that last stitch gets involved over here or it can get mistaken for the double stitch. Get right up to it. If you need to, every row you'll be knitting or purling one less than the row before. I'm not counting right now. I'm doing this without counting, but I have two double stitches. I'm going to turn the work around. The yarn's already in front for me to slide this over slide it over and yank it up and over the needle. Now I have to get ready to work back. I have purl stitches facing me, so I'm gonna keep that tension on and so I can bring that yarn to the front and I can purl back. Should be one stitch less than I just knit to get me back over. Purl right up to the last double stitch created. There's a way to do this with moving stitch markers, and I'm just trying to show you with trying to recognize what is happening. So as I purl across, I can every once in a while stop and look. I have two double stitches over here, just like I had two on the knit side. These will stay balanced. Every knit and purl row will stay in balance. So if I just had two stitches on the end on the knit side, I will have two double stitches on the purl side. So one, two, 
They look like X's or two stitches there. So this is my last clean purl stitch. I'm gonna purl it. I'm gonna turn the work around. Again, remember my other sock is hanging out here. I'm just ignoring him as much as I can. I need to slide the last stitch worked back over to my right needle, but I need my yarn to be in front to do that. And then I'm gonna yank the yarn up and over and set up to do my next row, which is a knit row. So I'm just going to start knitting. Keep as much tension. Ooh, I almost lost this stitch. Keep as much tension on that wrap as you can. Again, this knit row should be one stitch less than what I just did. Which means there'll be one more double stitch out here on the edge. One, two, three. Pull them away if you need to see if it's a double stitch. It'll almost feel like a knot. So I've got two here. Now I'm going to turn, slip the last stitch work. Make sure yarn's in front. On the purl side, it will be. Slip the last stitch worked over to the right needle, yank up and over, and get ready to work back. I'm on a purl row, so I'm going to purl back. Again, I'm purling one fewer stitches than I just knit, if you're keeping track of numbers. I'm going to purl up to the last three stitches over here because I have one, two, three double stitches. One, two, three. I have two more stitches. Now I'm going to turn again. I'm gonna continue this. Again, I need my yarn in front before I slip a stitch, yank it over the needle, and knit back. I'm gonna continue this till I only have 10 regular stitches left. I will join you back for that. One, two, three, four. Every time you turn around on a knit row, you're gonna have one more, and on a purl, you have one more double stitch over here than you did last time you came over here, and you'll be knitting or purling one stitch less than the last time you did a row. So this row, this row I'm knitting 24, which means on the next row, I will be purling 23 and so on until you get down to 10 stitches that are not German short row or double stitches. I'll meet you when we're just about there and we'll pick up there. Again, if you're not sure, pull them apart. This one, there's a single stitch. This one, there's a double. So that's my last stitch. I get to turn, slip a stitch, wrap it up and over the needle. And then I'm purling, so I'm gonna pull it to the front and keep that tension and purl back. So here I'm almost at the end of my decreases in with these short rows. I just knit 13. Remember, I wanna go until I have 10 whole stitches left. And I've got, if I count these double stitches, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I knit my 13 and what, what finishing this short row is bringing my yarn in front and slipping this last stitch over. That means I've got 10 on both sides. And if I knit back across here, one, two, three, four, you go at your own speed, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I wanna go till I have 10 of those, so I'm really close. Turn around again. 
I haven't touched this guy the whole time. He's just been flipped around back and forth. My yarn's already in front. I'm gonna slide it over, pull it up over the needle. Come to the front because I'm gonna purl. Remember, these numbers decrease one every time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This next guy is a double stitch. He looks all crazy. So I turn around. And I complete my short row here. And I have 10 stitches before I go out, which means I'm gonna start going back out again. I'm gonna do my 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Instead of turning and doing another short row, first I'm gonna knit one of these double stitches. Now, if I put my needle under here so you can see it, they look like there's maybe two stitches in front if I roll it up or there's a little X there. I'm gonna treat it like I'm knitting two together or I'm gonna go through the center. See, there's that X. I came through it from the knit side so I could knit that double stitch. I'm gonna stop there. I'm only gonna do one each time. I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna slip this first stitch over. And I'm gonna purl across until I hit another double stitch. Shouldn't be too many stitches right now. Might only be that 10 again. You'll know when you hit a double stitch because it'll feel weird. Here's my last regular stitch. This guy's funky looking. It's two strands there. They may look like they're overlapping a little bit, but I want to try to get through the center of this. There's that little X knot thing there. And I'm going to purl the double stitch. And then I'm going to turn around. Every time you, you purl or knit a double stitch, turn, slip that first stitch, and work back across. We're not slipping and yanking. We're not creating another double stitch. We're just slipping it. The yarn can stay in front or behind depending on where it naturally wants to be. I'm gonna come on over here. This time it'll feel like there's a gap there. If I knit my last single stitch, then I'm gonna knit my double stitch, work the double stitch, stop and turn. Keep the yarn on the side it wants to be on, just slip that first stitch. We're not creating another double stitch, I'm just slipping it so that I can curl my way back across. You're gonna do this and work your way back out every time you work, you purl or knit across. Gonna go right up to the next double stitch, which should feel different. You should be doing one more stitch every row if you wanna keep track by the number of stitches. I often do this by feel, but sometimes it doesn't recognize, like feel doesn't feel right, if that makes any sense. Here's my last stitch that's not a double stitch. It's not one of the short rows. Here's that next short row, and I'm gonna work my way so that I'm I've got two stitch strands in front, two strands in back. I'm purling through the center of that double stitch. Turn. Keep my yarn in back this time because I'm not creating a double stitch. I just want to slip this first stitch and knit back across. So I'm going to go back and forth until I have hit every single double stitch, but I'm, I'm just working one every time. What it's gonna do is mirror image this in decrease, then I'm gonna increase, and I'm gonna have a little heel like this guy. I'm gonna keep working these, and I'll meet you. Here's that last single one. Let me 
knit through the center of another double stitch, turn, my yarn's now in front, I'm just going to slip this guy, maybe yank him tight to the needle, not pulling anything over anybody else. And I'm going to purl back across until I hit a double stitch on the other side and work that. And I'm going to work my whole way out and I will see you at the end of this. I have worked all the stitches back out again, almost. There's one double stitch over here. So I'm on my last purl row. I'm still slipping the first stitch keeping it as tight as I can and purling back across. This means I'm going to purl back across pretty much half of the entire stitches for the sock. Should have mentioned in the beginning, hopefully self-explanatory, but maybe not that we're using half the stitches for the heel and the other half are remaining on the other side of this magic loop needle for the instep. Let me jump ahead to where I get to the end stitches on this. Here's my last double stitch and I got to dig in there to make sure I get both strands. I'm going to purl that together. Now I've worked all of my stitches out and I have two heels, one in each color. However, I'm in the middle here. I need to get out here both so I can turn around and start doing the other side of these. And also because the color, remember I switched colors here. The other color that I want to start knitting with is out here on the edge. So I'm going to continue to slip that first stitch. I'm going to knit across. I will meet you over there for what I hope to do next. Take a look as I go though. It's a pretty nice heel seam, I think. All right, I'm at the edge here. And I will have a gap to close up that some people feel the need to close up. I'm going to pull this a little tighter. Some of the gap right here is because I switch colors, but I'm back to where I can do a normal magic loop where I can hang on to what I just knit, flip over to the other side, get these guys straightened out. If they flippy floppied while I was doing my other heel, I'm going to pull on the loop. That's going to pull the other end of the needle up into the front. What's now the front side of these stitches. I'm going to pull this out the back needle. And what I may do before I start, get the right color here. I may pick up a couple of stitches across this gap. You can use this needle and this, or you can just stick in, find a spot to pull up a stitch. You can pick up two to three stitches along here. Just know that you're going to decrease that on the next round. This last one I'm not really happy with, so I'm going to let it go and only do two. And I get to start knitting across the top part of these socks that haven't seen any love for a while because I was doing the heels. I'll meet you at the junction when I'm going to move to my other side. Or maybe if you can hang out with me for just a few more seconds here. I'm knitting across. All right, I've reached the end. I'm going to drop the multicolor from this sock. I'm going to pick up, I can even slide it down if I want to a little. I'm going to pick up the white multicolor for this sock, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other one where I'm going to pick up a few stitches to close up the gap here and knit across this side. I'm going to do that as well on the back side. 
when I first encounter the sock, I'm going to pick up a few stitches to cover the gap. And then what I would like to do on the next round or two is decrease out the extra stitches I've picked up so that I am back to my 64 stitches. That's the most important thing or whatever the original number when you were knitting down here was. So I'm here at the turn on the other end. I'm gonna hang on to the needle, pivot, get all this yarn up there, pull on the cable so the other end of the needle comes up into what is now the front, which is the side with my heels. Pull the back needle out. And before I start knitting right here, I'm going to pick up a couple of stitches. Now picking up these stitches can also lead to gaps. It is not a fail safe way not to have gaps. Sometimes you'll need to play around with where as I can't seem to do it and talk at the same time. See, that's going to leave a hole. So maybe if I go down a little further, that could leave a hole too. It's really, really hard to say that this is going to magically fix any holes I think I might have in my socks. But on my next couple of passes, maybe each time at the beginning of, of the side, I will knit a couple together until I get back down to my original number of stitches. Keep track so you don't decrease too many. But if you picked up two stitches on either end, then you have two stitches on either end to decrease at some point. This is only loose because I changed colors there. Again, I'm gonna drop the white, push this sock out of the way, grab the multicolor from this one, pick up, a couple of stitches and knit across. Thanks again for joining us for doing these lovely short row, German short row, but slipping on the way back out heels. We did this one today. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. There's also memberships if you'd like to monetarily support us, but it is not necessary. Give us a thumbs up, ask a question, leave a comment, that kind of thing. And as always, may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Come on, come on, Katie, get off.